Hello everyone, welcome to our event. This event is brought to you by Data Talks Club, which is a community of people who love data. We have weekly events. This is one of such events. And by the way, I still have the old logo here. I need to update it if you're, you're watching it from YouTube. So now we have a new logo for one month already. Anyways, there is a link in the description. Click on this link and you will see all the events we have in our schedule. Of course, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, now it's the best time to do it. Go uh, below the video, click on this button and you will get notified about all our future events. And then finally, the most important thing, join our amazing Slack where you will get to talk to other data enthusiasts. During today's interview, you can ask any question you want. There is a pinned link in the live channel, in the live chat. So click on this link and ask your question. And I will be covering these questions during the interview. That is all from me. So let me stop sharing my screen. And also let me take a look at the questions I prepared for you. So now I have them and I'm ready to start. Are you ready to start? I'm ready. I actually, I, I, I just done the most important thing. I shared the link to this, uh, I don't know, webinar, uh, this lesson, this discussion, my Telegram channel. Ah, that's awesome. Yeah, so somehow I forgot about doing that and you didn't tell me to do that. That's why it's it's your fault. Yeah, it is totally my fault. But now I uh, hope you to YouTube it's 60 people watching now. So yeah, I don't I know hope, how many. We'll see a search 66. OK, let's. Yeah, let's so that's coming from your channel. So hi, everyone. Uh, and anyways, so I think we should start, right? So this week we will talk about machine learning system design interviews. And we have a special guest today, Valery. Valery works at blockchain.com as a head of data science. Before that, he worked in quite a few places, uh, more recently at Facebook, at uh, in WhatsApp as a user data pri privacy tech lead, lead. And then before that, he worked in Alibaba Russia as the VP of machine learning, at X5 Retail Group as senior director of data science. and quite a few other places, Yandex, I think, as well. Then also, Valeri is a Kaggle competition grandmaster, and you are ranked globally in the top 30. That's amazing. Was, was ranked. Was, OK. Online, because I mean, and you now? see, and I don't know, I am trying not to take a look because there is an exponential decay. And if you don't compete, and what is even more important, if you don't win, your score is deca decaying. And the, as Kaggle, Kaggle is an addiction. So the best way is not to go there because you can't be suddenly find yourself doing the Kaggle again. Yeah. So I got my master's and then for me, it was enough. I thought it's just I, too I, much well, time. I, I think you made a very, very wise choice. <laughs> okay. So I briefly already told everyone about your background, but before we go into our main topic of machine learning system design, maybe let's talk a bit more in details about your career journey. Can you tell us a bit? Uh, well, about that. Uh, sure, let's start from the existing time, from, from the current time. Uh, as you said, I'm head of data science in blockchain. So a bit about blockchain first. It's, it's a very old crypto company. Uh, then I say very old, it is very, very old. It was founded in 2011. So imagine, now try to come back in your head to 2011 and imagine you are the person creating the company called blockchain. I mean, come on, it's like to create the company name Amazon in 1997 to sell the books online and you're still alive. Like it's Amazon, eBay. So the company is uh, like work with a cryptocurrency, but in a very, to some extent, classical way, because it initially, there, there were two friends. They were working on a company named Coinbase. So the one guy uh, was saying that uh, the money has to, they have to be in the custody of the company. Another guy will say, no, 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 the money has to be in the custody of the people. So it has to be non-custodial wallet, which means that nobody except you has an, uh, has an access to the wallet. And so they parted their ways. And another guy, he founded blockchain and it started as a, as a wallet. Then it turned to be also an analytical platform providing on-chain analysis. But then an exchanger and trading so basically it's a very to some extent very classic business exchanger wallet uh, analytics but for a uh, non-traditional assets 
as we can say, cryptocurrencies is non-traditional. So as a head of data science, it's an it's a awful, it's a terrible job title because it's a very broad definition because a head of data science, who, who is that person? So in blockchain, head of data science is a person who's responsible for a data engineering, uh, machine learning, operational engineering, machine learning itself makes sense, data analytics, uh, BI, business intelligence, uh, product analytics, however, the difference between product analytics and data analytics is so thin that I don't see it. I see no difference almost. And I, I mean, I have spoken about that with a couple of people and they said, I don't know. So, and, and like business analytics. Uh, before that, it's more like head of data than, rather than head of yes, data science. To some extent, yes, because it's everything related to data, from infrastructure to applications, from analytics to visualization. Before that, I was working in. Well, I joined Facebook, left Meta, and I will just uh, rotate my screen a bit. You see those two buildings. This is a new Facebook office on the King's Cross. So that's uh, partly the reason why I moved to the King's Cross. However, I had no opportunity to attend this office, which I still <laughs> I li I like the area. So I started to, to work in a WhatsApp to create and found the team called User Data Privacy, uh, which is kind of a very important team for Facebook because uh, only for user data privacy issues, Facebook been fined for like $5 billion. So you can imagine Facebook does not want that to happen again. Um, it, it was a very interesting change uh, because uh, when I was in Russia, I was working in Alibaba, retail company, X5 retail group, retail company, Yandex market, as you can imagine, also retail company. And I switched to, let's say, to some extent security or integrity. I was very interesting. And so, yes, I, I spent some time in a, in a, in a Facebook and then in Meta. Then I was thinking what to do next, and I received this offer from people in blockchain. I thought the company is doing great, so the mission is, is makes sense. Uh, we can speak about that later about the mission, but I don't think it's like uh, this uh, webinar. How you call it? Is it webinar? Is it like uh, life interview? Life interview. Okay, I don't think it's about like blockchain mission, but like the mission. Uh, that's it. So what else? I was leading quite a big team in my time. Like the biggest team I was leading was almost 150 people, machine learning engineers, data analysts, etc. I was conducting many interviews. Uh, I don't know how many, definitely hundreds, maybe even more, maybe, maybe already in thousands. I don't know. It depends because like, for example, right now, I have an average 30, 40 interviews per week. So it's like just, it takes entire week, right? <laughs> well, it take, well uh, it, it takes a lot of time, and uh, it's not the, unfortunately it's not the only thing I'm doing. But mm -hmm. having an interview, even if you are the one who asks the questions, is very energy consuming, but very rewarding and very interesting. So my main area is machine learning. I also uh, know a bit about data analytics, A/B testing, and I. I had to teach myself some data engineering and MLOs, but this is not my strong side. So that, that's it. And I had a privilege and opportunity to design and implement systems on a large scale. And we say large scale, it might be billions of users per day and hundreds of billions events per day. So there are only a few companies that can yeah, there are, give not, you that, right? Not that hard to uh, understand what company that was. Mm -hmm. X5? X5 uh, of, course, of course, of <laughs> course, of course. Which else? OK, so let's talk about machine learning system design. So this is a part of the interview process. And uh, you said you did a lot of interviews as an interviewer. And I imagine also like when you were um, joining Facebook before that, you also had to take this interview. So can you tell us about that? So what is machine learning system design and why is it an important step in the interview process? Okay, before doing that, let's try to review uh, who needs to go through machine learning interview. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First of all, in Facebook, if you are applying or, or Amazon or Google, 
And I think other big tech companies as well, because like uh, these three are largest ones in terms of uh, amount of people working there and market cap. So if you're applying for a data scientist position, uh, what would you do? You'd write a SQL code, work with metrics and dashboards. So if you expect that data scientists has some relations to machine learning in these companies, you are mistaken. Mm. People who does, who does machine learning, they are called machine learning engineers, right? Mm -hmm. so, and uh, these people have to pass through software engineer loop in the Facebook and some additional rounds of interview. So for machine learning, and again, uh, for machine learning, for software engineer, uh, there are different stages, but there are, I would say, a couple of interviews which are very important in terms of assessing your level. These interviews are, of course, behavioral, project impact, but that, that makes sense, right? And two very important thing is system design interview, which is how to design the system overall, and machine learning system design. This interview is usually conducted for people starting from level five. Of course, at the very beginning, nobody knows what level you are. It might be between four and five. So you might end up being level four, still coming for this interview. Probably. Level five is like senior, right? Or... Yeah, level four. Yeah, true. true. Good, 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 good catch. Yes, level five is a senior. Level five is a senior. It's a terminal level on Facebook, which means that if you're on this level, it is a honorary thing to be on this level forever. And then, so if you ended uh, on level four, probably it, it, it was because ML system design interview. And so this interview tells uh, the interviewer, tells the Facebook or Google or company, uh, your ability to have a overview of the system. And in 45 minutes, being able to tell the story, almost a monologue of yours, about how you will build this system and touch very different points. And also, well, I know I, I, I've seen some questions you prepared. We'll discuss that, how deep you should go. But it's a tricky thing because you have to, to do that. It's like you're solo in front of the person who is silent and you're under pressure. And, and, and it might be you've never done that before. There's not that many people in the real world who has the privilege and opportunity to build the system from the scratch. Even if you've done that, who, who can promise you that the system which they will ask you to build is the system you really has an experience with? So if I summarize this, so basically this uh, is one of the steps that machine learning engineers get when they interview at Facebook or probably now I should call it Meta, at Meta, Google and similar companies. Uh, so machine learning engineers get that and this is a way to assess how well they can design machine learning systems. So these are the systems that need to uh, do something with machine learning, right? That's true and not also that. Uh, the thing is that it's one of the most important. So let's say you can fail code interview. Well, to some extent, right? You can fail it on a different scale. And still, they can push you further. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, yeah. a, it's one of the critical. What happened to me, but maybe uh, this is something I prepared for, for later. And uh, yeah, so you said that important interviews for uh, detecting, for assessing your level is behavioral behavioral interview, system design interview, and machine learning system design interview. So maybe can you tell us in um, what is the difference between system design and machine learning system design? Okay, let's try to see what is disparity between those two. First of all, when you ask to do a system design interview, you usually ask about data structures, about different server side components, like what are the databases? What is the amount of data will be processed? Uh, what is the write th through output? What is a read throughput? Uh, how you would work with the cache? How would you work with the load balancing, sharding, uh, splitting, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's basically the software engineering. While on machine learning design, the, usually the thing is to understand how you will build it from machine learning perspective. Let, let's, let's, let's give an example, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let, let's take, for example, 
the thing is that uh, the one of the question how would you build a model which has to catch a fraud on the platform so for example let's imagine the best way if i had the crystal ball which tells me with a hundred percent accuracy if this transaction is a fraudulent or not then the problem is solved right i just i just take the ball I just run the transaction through the ball. Ball tells me one or zero, so that's done. However, we understand that it will never happen. There will be some discrepancy always. So now we can say we know that we have to output not zero or one, but some score between zero or one when we have a transaction. Now, when we have a transaction, now that probably means we'd like to, 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 have, to be, have the system real time. Okay, we have, okay, let's, let's put it in mind. Real-time system, score between zero and one. Okay, it's a fraud. Uh, does it mean that, uh, let's say, we're speaking about the money, does it mean that 10 bucks is of the same importance as a 100,000 bucks? Probably not, meaning that we need to have a probability of this transaction being fraudulent and not just a score between zero and one. As soon as we have a probability, we can calculate the expected fraud which already leads us to the first metric to assess the quality of the model, which is an expected calibration error or weighted expected calibration error. Okay, we've got that. We also know that the ideal solution would be a binary classification task, one and zero, the crystal ball, right? We know that we, this will never happen. However, we know that it's binary equation and the um, output has to be between zero and one and it has to be a probability. So that also tells us what should be our loss function? The loss function should be from a family of a proper scoring function. Fortunately, the very basic log loss is good here. So we know that we might start from a log loss. We also know that we might start from a very basic linear regression model. Why is that? Because we know that it has to be very fast in real time, right? We also know that uh, fraud coming from people People are very creative creatures, very creative, and they are notorious for being very adaptive. So we, we know that suddenly the pattern might change. So with a linear, linear regression, we can retrain the model in online fashion and adapt as well for these changes. However, it depends on how fast we will receive our labels. And so you see, we're coming to a completely different question. How can we gather the labels? Okay, what is fraud and what is not? Are these labels 100% sure? Or there is some noise there? Because, well, there, is, there, there might be some noise. How would we fight it? Or let's have the first assumption, there is no noise. We come later to that. Good. Now, how we uh, just gather our labels? How much time will pass until the transaction will be labeled? Is it, is it immediately? Probably not. Day, two days, three days, 30 days. Given that, do we need to update our model in real time? So we're coming back, you see? Okay, but let's say just we'll make a very simple design by, by the definition. Uh, linear, linear regression, we have a log loss. We know that one of the metrics would be expected calibration error and would be just maybe weighted expected calibration. Also, what else? Should we, should we take a look into other metrics? Probably, yes. But we know that the fraud is very class- in class balance skewed. So we know that class imbalance is extremely high there. We also know that it might change. So that means that if we would like to take a look into the metrics, these metrics, they have to be class balance insensitive probably because otherwise just class balance change, metric change, but models models the same. Okay, so what are the most favorite metrics? Is a precision and recall. Recall is class balance insensitive while precision is class balance sensitive. So forget about precision. Can we replace precision with something? Why not? Specificity, also not bad. Okay, something else. Maybe we know that there is some threshold of expected fraud level, which we can just go with and then we can't. Do we need to introduce some ways? Okay, good. What data will we will use? Is it amount of transaction? Is it just history of the user? How fast we will update them? Now, let's say we have a model. How can we assume that model is better than the previous? Of course, we have some offline metrics. We have an expected calibration error, weighted expected calibration error, precision. We don't have precision, forget about it. It's bad metric because it's class balance sensitive. We have specificity, we have recall, 
What now? We can run an A-B test to see the online performance, right? How would we see that? How long we need to run A-B test, et cetera? So all this have to be called. Okay, now let's say I told you about the basic features. What about feature engineering? How can, like I said, linear regression, it doesn't take non-linearity into account. Can I do that with the basic feature engineering? Probably, if you have enough data, just having a polynom of the second degree, which shows you an in overlap between features, how they interact with each other is enough. Because if you have trillions of data points, you can do that. Your sparsity is not an issue here. And so on and so on and so on and so on. Yeah, that's quite a lot of information I was trying to process this. I also realized that I forgot to, to press this button. No, no, there is no, but there is, will be a <laughs> But it's, uh, there is a stream, yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, the, the, there was a separate uh, recording. Anyways, yeah, that's quite a lot of things. And so this is, uh, this was an example of machine learning system design. So you, uh, the interview starts and then the person, the interviewer asks you, let's design a system for detecting fraud. And then you probably ask uh, this person a few questions and then you do this, uh, information dump on that person right in, in, in the best <laughs> best way is even not to ask but let, let's say my assumption is that do you agree with that or not like mm -hmm. you see you ask the question but actually you made an assumption say are you okay with that let, let, well because look you you've been you've been given some information okay mm -hmm. then of course in real world you would gather the context because context mm -hmm can make everything very different. Because imagine, like in the case of the fraud, if you receive a label within a minute, it's very different to if you receive the label within months. It it's affects everything. Uh, so, but you could make an assumption. You say like, my assumption is that. And mm -hmm. to be honest, I made might be many assumptions and nobody prevents you from making assumptions which will make your life easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. And uh, while you were talking, so the, the original question I actually asked you was about the difference between system design and machine learning system design. And I think it's very clear what machine learning system design is. So it requires some domain knowledge, right? Uh, to some extent, or making some assumptions, and then you need to uh, walk uh, through the process of solving a particular problem. And I have an example that I, from my personal experience of uh, being interviewed uh, at one of these uh, companies, so on system design, I had the question to design a system for uh, finding places of interest. So let's say I go to London, right? So I, uh, I go to whatever central square you have in London, and then um, the system would need to give me all the points of interest, all the interesting places within, let's say, the closest ones. Right. It was a system design, right? It was a system okay. design. I, I right. had almost the same question on my yes. interview in the Facebook. Yes. And then, so that was the system design part. So there I needed to think how exactly I store these things, like how I retrieve them fast, uh, how I do, you know, sharding, load balancing, all that. And then on machine learning system design, it was a very related question. So the question I got there was, okay, now we have this system that returns, uh, the closest points of interest. Now let's have a recommender system there. So let us uh, let this system return the closest, the, the most interesting, 15 the most interesting places that are interesting to this specific user. So I think this is uh, a nice example to show the, the difference between the two. So in one, you need to design a system, you don't think about machine learning at all. And then on the second, you don't need to think about the scalability, load balancing, sharding, all that. You have a specific problem machine learning problem that you need to solve and then you go through the solution right exactly exactly yes like the, you could you could also take the make the same example of the fraud system now the system design question would be can you build uh, the system which will handle trillion transactions per day and these mm -hmm. tra transactions are coming from this so you see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then if, uh, on uh, the ML system design, you would talk through this log loss and things like this. Right. But where does system design actually come into into picture here? Because here we talked about, you know, selecting the right metric, right? So that is the important thing that was, right? So you said it was log loss for uh, this specific case. 
or even before log loss, uh, I think it was. Uh, I don't actually remember what I you said. Expected calibration error. Yeah, so and based things on like that, this. I said that I need a loss which comes from a family of the proper scoring functions. Yeah, so you 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 need to say all these things, right? And then once you say, okay, this is the thing we are measuring. Uh, this is the baseline model you said, like a linear regression, right? Or logistic regression. And then you start building on top of that, right? Yeah, and for example, I remember that I was doing that for a Facebook. Uh, suddenly the guy asked me, okay, you said that the metric would be AUC. What is AUC? Why you said it's a ranking metric? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, that's because it's like what it does that. And I said, okay, okay, you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but where do we actually design systems? Or this is uh, what you mean by, like, do we need to say that this system is doing this and then there is another system? I, or it's more about designing the... I don't get the question, but by itself, it's a system. Every machine learning okay. model, it's not like a model. It's the, a whole system because you, mm -hmm. you have features coming to the model. Model outputs something. These outputs also have ta to be taken into account. There might be A-B testing here. There might be feature preparation here. So it's like, it's a whole system. I mean, mm -hmm. look, there are companies creating just a parts, a components for these systems. Like you can take as a feature store feast, right? It's like closer to the system design. So it might mm -hmm. be that you can call that engineering, software engineering system design and machine learning system design because mm -hmm. in, in both, you have to design a system and just you designing systems with the different goals. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so I was already talking about my experience of interviews. Uh, uh, so there I was interviewed for a tech lead position and this question was about uh, designing a recommender system for a point of interest, for points of interest. And the way I approached it, so first I proposed a metric. I don't remember what was the metric. Uh, I think probably like when, let's say you have a recommender system, looking at what user clicks and actually, uh, you know, maybe goes there uh, to this place could be a nice metric to measure. Then. I suggested some heuristics. Um, I don't remember, like maybe suggesting uh, clustering people by interest and then suggesting like just selecting the most popular uh, points of interest for each cluster specifically and then recommending this to this user. And then, yeah, I suggested then some other heuristics on top of that. And then at the end, I had a bit of time to talk about actual machine learning. And then I thought I really nailed it. So I thought I really did very well in this interview. I and the interviewer was nodding all the time <laughs> and like, okay, like, yeah, keep, keep going. Uh, so I really didn't think that uh, something could be wrong there. So I was really afraid of the uh, coding parts. Uh, I was also not super sure about system design part. And then a few weeks after that, I got feedback. So the, that feedback, uh, like the recruiter told me that I did well in coding parts. I also did well in system design, but I completely failed the machine learning system design part. Completely and, failed? Yeah, well, not completely, but they didn't well, like me, the, and the, I guess the, for, the British, for a tech-led position. British, British HR <laughs> would never write you that. The British okay. HR would write you, Alex, it was wonderful. It was brilliant. There was just a slight uh, miscommunication or something like that. I'll never tell okay. you completely failed. Never. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. I, I might be wrong with using the words. Uh, so I think the recruiter, I, I probably should use different words. But the reason for me to fail in the process, the whole interview was machine learning system design, not the others, because I was uh, I was afraid of others, but others I did well, but I failed that one. And the reason there was that the interviewer expected me to talk about actual machine learning. Instead, we talked about metrics, heuristics, and then I didn't take to have time to actually cover machine learning. And uh, yeah, what do you think about this? Is it a typical process? Uh, is it expected or? Um, Look, uh, let's be honest, uh, the interviewer was a human mm -hmm. and human are subjective, it might be a bad day. However, I mean, I'm to be, to some extent I'm surprised because that, that's hard to say if the interviewer was noting, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe again, the way you remember it, and the way yeah. it was, like it's like a natural thing for human beings to remember. Wow, wow. So you, there is even uh, the saying, lies like a witness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's hard to say. However, 
usually you could tell like you could try to secure yourself and during the interview you could ask do you want me to focus on that or let's go also another good way would be just to sketch look what, what we've done right now in five minutes we almost finished a very, very, very basic design of the fraud system, right? Because we already spoke about loss function, the model, the feature interaction, the metrics, uh, even mentioned A-B tests. Uh, so now we could go, okay, we outlined it. Do you want me to focus on something else? I'll go step by step, diving deeper and deeper. And, and so I'll make a second iteration, the third iteration, because usually, so how I was doing that, I told to the interview, like, like, I will build a baseline and then having a baseline because usually what you do in the machine, real machine learning, right? You are either, you take as a baseline a heuristic or you take a very simple model. You're not trying to build a spaceship from the very beginning. But again, it's hard to, to say. Maybe there are some signals, uh, very, very uh, gentle signals. You, you, you were unable to read. Uh, maybe it was just a bad day for interviewer. Try, yeah, it's, you see, it's it's hard to 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 some extent. Interview has a at least a part of luck in it. So, yeah, but you but, can try to be to secure yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what uh, my question was more about uh, what you think, not about uh, this particular interviewer, but about the way I approached it. Right. So, like because I approached with. Um, um, coming up with a metric, then heuristic, heuristic. I think what I should have done probably instead is perhaps I spent too much time on that, right? And uh, of course the interviewer could have stopped me saying, okay, let's actually talk about machine learning part. And, uh, he didn't do that, but uh, yeah, maybe this is my fault because I should have asked as you said. But I'm wondering how much time exactly should I spend on talking about heuristics and how soon should I jump into machine learning and then maybe deep learning, talking about, uh, you know, uh, ways, uh, more like more advanced things. Well, it's, it's an interesting question for which there is no single answer. It depends. So my, my opinion is that the interview has to be as close to the real job, to the real work as it can be. So uh, to be honest, an applied machine learning you don't usually dive very deep. You need to understand why and what. If you're applying for a machine learning research position, that's a different topic, right? So, but whatever. Usually, you you, you set up monitoring, you, you, you pick the loss, uh, uh, the model, the metrics, and then uh, then you, you dive deeper. You, you, you have to be able to just, uh, let's say, provide some arguments why did you pick this model why did you pick this loss function why did you pick this matrix however i don't think that it makes sense like something deeper what, what does it mean just write how gradients flow through the convolutional layer in the neural network what for mm -hmm. but that's or, you say it's my attitude <laughs> yeah or uh, maybe how to do back propagation for batch norm, right? Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. I've been asked this Let's question. Let's derive that. <laughs> yeah, that, by the way, I had this question interview once. Okay, so did you remember how to do yeah, this? Yeah, I was able to some extent, I think. Okay. Yes, I, I managed this. Because okay. look, I mean, oh, come on, batch norm, okay, so there's normalization, some, okay. <laughs> okay, but uh, yeah, so how do we actually prepare for such interviews? So for machine learning system design interviews, because it feels yeah. just being a practitioner is not enough because you never know first uh, what exactly is expected. Um, I guess you need to ask that. And also uh, you might get a question that is outside of uh, your domain expertise. Let's say I work in e-commerce and then, then I get a question in uh, recommender systems right so maybe i'm not working with recommender systems right now so how how can we prepare for such interviews there are many ways how you can prepare there are many services on the web in which people from a facebook really conduct uh, these kind of interviews uh, can do that for you for a for a small fee of 200 bucks and then they will give you a review uh however i haven't seen any any credible course on that, on machine learning design. Well, you could also try, you could try to ask for a feedback. That's, that's difficult. Uh, actually, I have an idea to, to make the course on machine learning design. 
but we decided to start from a just system design because mm -hmm. system design covers more people and it's easier. <laughs> Obviously, it's easier to sell because audience is bigger. Mm -hmm. Okay, because it's also not just uh, machine learning engineers, everybody, but engineers. Every, yeah, like everybody from a software engineer to machine learning engineer. Yeah, these people go through system design. So that's mm -hmm. why the audience, by definition, is higher. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one way, of course, you, you do this at work. Other way, you find people who can help you with that. Is there anything else you can do? I don't know, watching some Well, maybe on the web. Well, conference there, talks? There are some uh, ML system design overviews on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I've done my fair share. Uh, however, in Russian, so only people who speaks Russian or understand Russian can do them. But there is information. So look, uh, process to get hired into the Facebook is standardized. Mm -hmm. I've, I'll also, you can have an extensive experience. So to be honest, I, I've made no preparation for ML system design. Like I was sure in that part because that's the only thing I can do probably <laughs> design the system on the paper. But, uh, but well, extensive experience uh, and being, uh, there are talk, talks about that paper. So uh, I don't know, to be honest, because uh, that's hard for me to answer because I, I made no preparation by myself mm -hmm. for that. Okay. Yeah, because uh, if we take an e-commerce company, a small one, then we can think what kind of questions they may ask us uh, candidates that could be about uh, you know, designing a search system, designing a um, I don't know, recommender system, so the typical things that they do. However, when it comes to Facebook, in Facebook, Facebook does so many different things, you never know what exactly, what kind of domain you might get. So they may ask you to design a feed news feed, for example, or they might ask you to design a point of interest recommender system or a fraud detection system for WhatsApp, right? So it could be they will. anything. They will. I mean, I, actually, it's my favorite part because you, you, you've you seen the ML design interview I, I, I conducted, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you, you notice that my favorite thing is just a uh, person is coming. I know this person's background. I don't ask the question which is completely outside of the area of this person. And that's fun. That's hilarious. <laughs> that's, um, uh, that's what you did with me, right? Uh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> of course. I mean, I've been preparing uh, just fine to, for everybody. But that makes sense. Uh, hmm. However, there are still some patterns. There are still some stages uh, which are common for everything. You still need to gather data. You still need to understand what should be the metric, the loss function, what's the model, why is the model, what is online versus offline, should it be uh, adjusted on the fly, etc. And you see, to be honest, it's not that many steps, mm -hmm. right? And then come back, come back, come back, come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so speaking about this mock interview, so a while ago, uh, I had a mock interview with Valeri. So Valeri interviewed me. Uh, uh, the question was about detecting a fraud, uh, de <laughs> designing a fraud de detection system. Who could right? imagine that? Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, there on this interview, you showed a machine learning project checklist. And can you talk a bit about uh, that document? So, so what is there and yes. why it's helpful for designing ML systems? Ba back in the days of the Facebook, a uh, number of practitioners, they decided that, well, we have many ma machine learning services. Probably we need to write uh, some comprehensive, uh, uh, a comprehensive list of checks. We need to pass the service through. And it's actually a very good uh, preparation guide for system design because it covers exactly these points. Well, it's very comprehensive, like 16 pages document. However, you could also go and find the book uh, from O'Reilly uh, written by people from Google, by Googlers, about ML design practices, something like that. Let me take I think a machine look. learning uh, design patterns? Yeah, something like that. So you see, it's uh, to, some, to some extension, uh, you, you might have this checklist, you might just extend it to the whole book, but the, it remains the same. So uh, again, model coupling, decoupling, A-B test, features, uh, losses, uh, model types, uh, online, offline, batch processing, whatever. So it's 
-hmm. it's kind of you if you know the basic points then you go it's like uh, from a to b from b to c from c to d it's the same for system design it's like to some extent so in the cases for a consulting company, you know, like, uh, and they train you to solve any case, even if like you've never been working in the aircraft to create a company. But somehow uh, now, now you're an expert and you can suggest a CEO of this company how to run his or her business. And uh, yeah, so in this checklist, so let's say we need to design a system, not necessarily for an interview, but just design a system. So what is the first thing we need to do? Do you remember what is in this checklist? Well, I don't remember the first thing there, but I think that the first thing is what you really would like to do. What is your goal? Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, and, and is it really achievable? So why are you mm -hmm. doing that? Uh, because uh, what is your end goal in this fraud? What is your end goal and recommending people some interesting place? Is the goal that they'll find it as quick as possible? Is mm -hmm. the goal they will rummage through your app? Is the goal that they, they'll have to spend more time on the platform? Which, mind you, is the goal for many companies. Mm -hmm. Like their main metric is how, how many minutes, how much time the person spent on the platform. Now, understanding the goal, you have to think, okay, can I directly run for this goal? Or I, can, I can't for, for, for many reasons. And I have to approximate it. I have to use a proxy goal to that. Like for measuring if you're moving towards this goal or not, right? Yeah. So, for example, let's say you need to create a system uh, like an ads on the Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. So why do you need to do that? You probably would like to increase your total income, total revenue, mm -hmm. right? Okay. However, what can you do? Is the click, so you can you can train your system on the clicks, is it good enough? Well, probably not because the person who just uh, bought an ad, this person expects that the person who clicked will buy, right? Mm -hmm. So the click by itself leads to clickbait. Mm -hmm. So now, okay, can I, can I train the system on buys? Well, that's uh, to some extent more difficult because uh, clicks are rare events. However, purchases, to purchase something is even it's 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 even less frequent. So then you try okay, I make I can try to take a combined loss. However, I'll never be able to assess it really in offline. So only what I can do is just just to assess it in real time, uh, in a like in A/B test. But if I'll do that in A/B test and I have an old system of ninety five percent and the new system of five percent, is it still they're not affected? Or if I will run this on the whole traffic, the money will somehow just move from one pocket to another. Like other really independent. Sometimes it happens like a market budget allocation problem. So there are many things which might uh, show mm -hmm. you in the lack. Okay, so we need to define the goal, right? It could be people spend more time on the platform or we earn more money. And then we need to find a way to measure if we're moving towards achieving this yes, goal, to, so define so, a metric. To approximate your, okay, uh, can you move directly to your goal or can you approximate moving to your goal? Also, the thing is that if metric becomes your goal, with some time, it usually ceases to be a good metric. Mm -hmm. I imagine in this case of uh, more money, you can just fill your entire feed with ads, right? Yeah, for some and time then, it will work, but again, as you see in the long run. Mm -hmm. So you need also to have some other metrics, right? Not just the main one, but also like are people still spending time on our feed right, or not? Right, right. Like spending time, uh, their attrition rate, their churn rate, mm -hmm. uh, retention, what else? And many, many, mm -hmm. many, many things. Okay, so we do this and then you also mentioned A-B tests. So this is, uh, so we define a metric, then we say how exactly we are going to measure this metric and what do we do next? Well, let's checklist? say we, we, we know, let's say we know what we would like to do. We know how we can try to optimize in this way. So what does it mean optimize in this way? Meaning that if my model improved, uh, there is a high chance that my metric of interest will be better. Now, okay, I need to think uh, uh, 
what about the labels? But it's obvious, right? It's a proxy metric. You can say it's a label. I will construct my labels. Now, uh, we know that uh, you can say that labels are wise. Now we need to think about access, about the features. Okay, what features we have? Okay, we have these, these, and that features. So they might make sense, right? Uh, now, what, we have X and Y. We need a model. What kind of model? We have... Uh, target, we have labels. What about the loss function? Can we put it just directly in the loss function or not? Uh, okay, now come back to the features. We have a basic features. Do we need to make anything like, do we do we think they interact with each other? We need to do some pre-processing. Okay, think about that. Now let's say we can put the model. Uh, we have X, we have Y, we can train it, right? So what happens here? Uh, let's, let's do that. Now, We've done that, we receive some output. Okay, how do we know if this output is a good? Let's think about validation, right? Validation, because we didn't speak about that on, off, of, on fraud system, but actually we, we spoke about uh, offline metrics. For offline metrics, you need to have probably a, a data set in which you evaluate it. And then A-B test, how would you run A-B test? How long, how many samples you need? So, uh, what metrics of, of interest, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And perhaps if you cover all these parts during your system design interview, you're already in quite a good position, right? Yeah, but that's not, so to be honest, if we speak about the real system, run more, because let's mm -hmm. say you have an A-B test, output, tra -la -la, everything is good, but in real system, many things might appear. Mm -hmm. uh, distribution shift for features might appear, and we need to be able to detect that. Target or class imbalance might appear. Model might, might be broken. Do we need to have a fallback? We need to monitor the model, model performance. What we'll do if the performance is much lower, do we have a fallback? Mm -hmm. So like you see like a system because there are mo many more checks for a real system mm -hmm. because real system, mm -hmm. let's say we have a perfect model for our ads ranking and the model for some, somehow is broken or, or turns or slow, to be right. crazy or turns to be crazy. Right, slow, mm -hmm. it's not bad, crazy. <laughs> Uh, do we have and a crazy plan? you mean outputs uh, random stuff or yeah yeah for example or because there is feature shift distribution so mm -hmm. we need to detect we need to detect feature shift distribution target distribution uh, model performance right and have a plan b to switch to that but uh, look i need to take a look into this document <laughs> before <laughs> i can tell you that's why smart people were doing that for for quite some time it's not mm -hmm. like i can pull it from my head immediately but there are many things which might uh, mm -hmm. shoot you in the lack yeah, maybe before you do this, I realize we don't have a lot of time and there are quite a few questions. But uh, before we go to these questions, so we talked about this distribution shift, class imbalance, uh, model breaks, fallbacks. We should also mention that during the interview, right? It also shows our uh, experience, exposure of to course, these things breaking in production. Yeah, you and... see, if you'll do that, you'll be ahead of 95% or 99%. Okay, right okay, got it. Yeah, so let's go to questions. We have... Um, Quite a few of them. So the first question we have is what are the typical components of a machine learning system and what percentage of it is machine learning algorithms? Well, algorithm is just, uh, the, I think, one of the smallest parts is 1-5%. Mm -hmm. Because, well, I was speaking with a candidate recently and I told him, look, imagine you're a machine learning engineer in the company for two years, right? He said, okay, okay, I can imagine that. Imagine that you... You spend an immense amount of time creating an algorithm, finding the best algorithm, setting up the last function, all the rest, and metrics. It took you a humongous amount of time, two weeks. And you're in the company for two years. What do you do? Right? Mm -hmm. so, so you probably, so that's an answer. Let's say um, the most important, I would say, so if you have right output and right input, then the model is not that important if the model can handle that. Like, of course, you probably wouldn't use uh, linear regression for uh, images. But look, you might, you might argue, okay, should it be ResNet? Should it be visual transformer? Should it be whatever? Uh, I don't care. But if your features are very good and your labels make sense, uh, then it's it's a second order of improvement. But if you have a best model and your features are mediocre or bad and your labels are wrong, you're screwed. Mm -hmm. 
So, that's so the, the typical components of mach a machine learning system, this is the first part of the question, are so things that I, I guess data pipelines, data preparation, fe things fe that calculate fe features. Fe fe features label, features yeah. and labels, of course. Uh, and that's the most important, to be honest, mm -hmm. features. So I think features are very important. And then the things uh, that monitor this. Look, uh, look, let, 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 let's, make, let's make a mental exercise. Let's have a mental exercise. Let's imagine you have a computer vision deep learning model, right? Very mm -hmm. sophisticated, 175 layers. And then this is a classification model. And on top of on, on this model, you have what? You have a linear classificator. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? It means that actually this model classifies with a linear model. And all what is done before is just representational learning transforming the original features to the features which might be fed to linear model very successfully so see the features just just this mental exercise you can see that uh, so that's why you can take embeddings put them in whatever model would like to and you have a, a proper output Thank you. So let's go to the next one. How to make machine learning algorithms work with other parts of systems uh, to solve real world problems? So I guess the question is more about like, okay, we have this um, model that we just discussed that we talked about. So this model for classifying images. So how do we integrate it with the rest of the system and what do model we need is to do for that? Model is nothing by itself. That's yeah. why you have a machine learning engineer. That's why I, I don't like the job title data scientist because what is data science? The person who, who, who does something in Jupyter Notebook? Who, who needs that? <laughs> I mean, yeah, people need uh, a model integrated in the system. That's why they need machine learning engineer. That's why in Facebook, you're a machine learning engineer. You're engineer. You're, you're coming through the software engineer plus machine learning. Mm -hmm. So yes, the company needs machine learning engineer. And then again, what was the first task for us? Understand what we want to achieve. As mm -hmm. soon as you understand what you would like to achieve, it's much easier to achieve that mm -hmm. <laughs> without yeah. understanding. Of course, randomly, you might achieve a desired goal, but the chances are not high. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the most important thing when we start with building a machine learning system is to think about the goal. So this is something that was first in your checklist, right? And then the rest it's will thing, come. Do we, really, do we really need a machine learning? Here? Yeah, exactly. Might be, uh, might be, might be. We can be lucky, and we can just avoid it. Yeah. That's I think that there is uh, this article, or more like a mini book from Google, uh, which is called "The Rules of Machine Learning," right? And I think there's the first rule is. Uh, what was that? You don't need machine learning or something like that? I don't know. I, I, I haven't read this book. You see, I passed the ML design interview, so that's <laughs> why I can just now uh, mm -hmm. lay uh, on my back and do nothing. Okay. <laughs> that's cool. And yeah, the question is about the book you mentioned. Uh, the book was machine learning design patterns, right? Well, something, like, something, something like that from Google, yeah. So it was, but, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a good book. Uh, unfortunately, it, it didn't reveal me anything, but still, it's, it's okay. It's it's a good mm -hmm. book. It, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess for practitioners who work with machine learning, they, they would think, okay, I knew all that. But what they did, the authors, is they categorized. So they yeah, went it's, through it's, it's, it's a good taxonomy. This. It's a good taxonomy. It's a good okay. book. So uh, if it didn't reveal me anything, it doesn't mean it's a bad book. It just mm -hmm. uh, uh, means that it's my problem. <laughs> But I think uh, for many people it will be useful because for each pattern there, they talk when exactly you need to apply this and how to apply this. So there are, they also discuss, uh, they talk about uh, what kind of tools are there. And since this is a book from Google, th there is a lot of focus on Google Cloud, but they also talk about uh, open source solutions like Kipfer, sure. for example. Well, of course. Google Cloud yeah. is, is not the worst cloud, definitely. Yeah. We use Google Cloud in blockchain, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so another question from Alvaro is, uh, Alvaro is graduating soon and he is a machine learning intern at a startup. And he's starting a job hunt, uh, hopefully at Funk. So how much system design should he expect as a new grad? I think no system design at all, probably. I mean, look, who would expect from fresh grad to design highly complicated distributed system, high load with a 
uh, state-of-the-art machine learning. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. And as far mm-hmm. as I know, well, again, I didn't apply as a first grad for the Facebook, but as far as I understand, there would be no system design at all. Mm-hmm. What do you, do they ask? Coding, like lead style coding? Lead, 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 lead code style coding, behavioral, probably that's it, like two or three coding and one or two behavioral. Mm-hmm. That's not much to ask from a... Maybe for a machine learning, they might ask about algorithm, how do they work mm-hmm. inside it. It makes sense, right? Mm-hmm. And then at what level? Uh, I think you were saying level four, which is a little middle no, level, and level then level five. five. So level five, but there is no clear, like, no, we'll tell you, you're level five, you'll be interviewing for level five. Of course, it's always some, some margin. So you, mm-hmm. you might end up being level four, but still uh, go for this interview because you were on the brink between four and five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So basically, when you interview, um, so they automatically uh, probably add uh, this round, and then they use this round to assess which level yes, to yes, put yes, you yes. on. Yes. Yes. This is one of the most important stages to estimate the level. I mean, mm-hmm. you can't estimate. Okay, you solve the lead code medium. So does it mm-hmm. mean you level four or level eight? <laughs> Come on, mm-hmm. it's, yeah, right. it's not the lead code. Lead code just to to show that to some extent you can write a code, which is to be honest, my opinion these lead code style interviews are not very much correlated with the real ability to write the code mm-hmm. i mean yeah, i show I, how you can solve puzzles it shows how you can just train yourself because well i uh, to my surprise i've seen people who just uh, told me look look i've done these 400 lead code exercises but i failed an interview because they asked me a new task i've never solved before so mm-hmm. now i'm doing 500 more and i think wow come on i mean we're just six or seven patterns, uh, even even less, like what is that? Dynamic programming, backtracking, uh, what else? Uh, divide and conquer, uh, and there are a couple of algorithms you have to know in data structures, and, and, and that's, that's it, come on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh... But still, that means that you can, uh, you can just train yourself in this lead code style, and still you can't be very weak in writing a real code, and vice versa, it also might happen. So if you're a fresh graduate and you're interviewing for a junior position, you will not have this. But if you apply for a regular, let's say, machine learning engineer, doesn't even have to be senior, you will have this. And then they will, so. they will decide, decide, decide what kind of level to put you. I believe so. Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't think we have a lot of time for more questions. There, there is an interesting question from Vijay is about uh, what is the best way to validate the model performance in production? Do we need humans for that? Or there are other ways of doing it? I mean, the best way is to have an A-B testing, mm-hmm. A-B test. However, if you need human to have labels, then yes, you then, then label it and then receive you. If you don't need human to label the output, then you don't need human. So the mm-hmm. A-B test, I mean, that says co- causal inference, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so let's say in this example that we talked about point of interest, so there we can validate uh, based on the feedback how exactly people use our system. But yeah, we run, we run A-B test there, and what is the metric of interest? Again, mm-hmm. you see, this question pops up every time. What is the metric of interest? What we're actually trying to achieve? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and in some cases, uh, I guess uh, in these fraud uh, systems, it's trickier. Then sometimes you need people, fraud specialists, to look at the transactions and say... Well, that, that's, that's, yeah, how, how fast you can receive labels. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, maybe one last uh, question. So it seems like you have a very solid data science profile, Grandmaster at Kaggle. I hope um, so. That's pretty I, solid. <laughs> did, you, did, you, did, you, did you use the data scientist profile? Because I told you that I don't like data scientists as a job <laughs> title. I find it awful and terrible, right? <laughs> so you're just, you're just nudging me in my pain point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the question is, so with this profile, you're very good at uh, doing data science stuff. How did you transition from data science to being good at system design? I mean, it never was an issue, to be honest, because... I was in the right place in the right time having this opportunity to to do that. But it's again, it's it's uh, system design. To some extent, very simple. We have these uh, uh, pieces, not that many pieces to be honest. And you just mm-hmm. and that's it. 
Okay. Don't yeah, have so, a, don't have a good answer. Okay. Yeah, I guess uh, the answer may be just being a practitioner. So because models don't live in isolation, right? Yeah. So, look, uh, in fact, if you know how to do that uh, and you've been hired, you feel yourself very good. I felt myself very good in Facebook, very easy, had a great uh, results of performance review, me and my team, so pff, it was easy. <laughs> Left okay. in the right time if you take a look into the stock right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, I think that's all we have time for. So maybe last one, how can he, people find you? Uh, well, we can find me on LinkedIn, just type in my name. Uh, I see you just use a Y instead of I, I with a new, uh, rules, it should be I, I on the end, but okay. I, I, I copied it from Slack. Well, I, I think, that, change yeah, it. I think mm -hmm. that people can, can still find me on their LinkedIn uh, and, and fire some questions there. Yeah, there are so many different ways of spelling, Valeri. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. uh, not, not that many different, but there are definitely some ways. More than one. Yeah, true, true. More than one, some ways. Okay, and then you can also use W, right, maybe for uh, Germany. For, for Germany, right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks for joining us today. Thank thanks you very for much, Alex. And you have a great evening and great weekend. Take awesome. care and see you. Yeah. Goodbye. And thanks, Bye. everyone.